That's it. All right, this is May the 13th, 2009. We're at the uh, Morrison Public Library, Burke Room. This is the Fire Department Oral History Interview number seven with... Uh, Dean Baker. Tell us about how you got involved with the Fire Department. Well, uh, like everybody else many years ago, uh, you believe that. Files. I was employed in Burlington Industries doing electrical work, and uh, Frank Festman uh, used to be on the volunteer department. And he was talking about he was going to retire, and he came and asked me if I would be interested in being a volunteer fireman. Well, I was gung ho anyway, so I filled out the application and talked to Marvin. And, was put on in 1973, I think, somewhere in there. Anyway, I lasted about 28 years and retired or give it up, whatever you want to do. When you get 55 and you can draw that money, then you had to get out to draw it. So I was interested in the money, so I retired. So I could get that little bit of money every, every month. But uh, it's been a, it was a good time. I enjoyed it. There's a lot of competition between the other volunteers of how many calls you answered or when you showed up, you got your name on the list or some of them could call in and get their name on the list. But <laughs> what about your first fire? First fire was a false alarm uh, down at the ballpark. Uh, Phil, first time I walked up, Phil says, well, we got the new man here tonight. And he wrote me on the list. That was my first call. And I don't remember the last one. <laughs> <laughs> what was your most memorable one? I reckon uh, we had a house fire on South Main Street. And we were up on the roof. And uh, I fell through the roof. And uh, caught myself with my arms like that. And they pulled me back out. And I think that kind of sticks with me all through a burning attic kind of makes you think a little bit. Uh, the house was pretty well consumed, but luckily we didn't get hurt. What was your, uh, what was the biggest fire? Or Probably the same one everybody else talks about. <laughs> the downtown fire. Yeah. The Western Auto. The yeah. Blevy fire everybody <laughs> laughed yeah. about. Uh, Chief Chuck Nance brought that up, the Blevy. About Blevy. You know why? Yeah, about the windows. We just, yeah, well, we just had a class. Yeah, and, uh, just had a LP class. class yeah. gas, and we were around front, front, and windows come out of it, and Chucky come running down the street hollering, Blevy, Blevy, Blevy. <laughs> and we laughed over that, still laugh over it. Chucky gets a little <laughs> upset when you get on about it, but it was, it was, it was funny, but... That's probably the biggest fire I've ever been to. Now, where were where were you? What were you doing during that fire? I mean, where were you stationed? We've heard where some of the other guys were. Well, I was in the front a good bit, and then after we sort of got it knocked down, we sort of just you know I was up on the roof at one time on the old belts or delts five and ten. Yeah. We had we went up on the roof to make sure it didn't get across the roof. Then. Uh, just moved around to different places, really. Uh, if you had two or three people on a hose, and if you'd been on the hose a long time, then you'd swap off, and then maybe you'd go relieve somebody else with something. But we sort of rotated around, and that's the night Stacey brought their aerial down, and uh, I don't know why. When they got there, it was already on the ground. All they done is got up and hit some hot spots. But uh, that was... I think about the biggest fire I've ever went to. What's some of your more uh, uh, not funnier moments or, or moments that just kind of made you laugh or or stories you heard? <laughs> well, about, well, it involved some of the pavement, but we used to <clears throat> come up and hang around the apartment a lot about that. The funniest thing I ever got involved with was when PR was counterfeiting hundred dollar bills. <laughs> I thought that's what it would be. <laughs> hey, 
they were always going to jump to somebody. They was always having a big time. And, and Fiore went back there and copied some $100 bills because he always carried $100 bills. And, and he went out in the parking lot and laid one down. He, people would come up and pay their water bill. Well, this man come up and picked this. He had one. He seen it. He looked at it. He picked it up. Next thing you know, the man was down at Memorial Federal trying to get it changed for it. And all of a sudden, a couple of weeks by, went by, and here comes uh, uh, either the IRS people or the state people investigating a counterfeit $100 bill. And the funny part about it, PR went in and admitted to everything and told them it was a joke. They were just cutting up. And it was a joke. It kind of went sour. But everybody... <laughs> It really got real touchy there for a little while, but it, it was one of the funny things that we were always doing. We'd, at night, we'd get up there with, when everybody was having, seeing these UFOs, we was up there with helium balloons and candles letting them go off up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to, you know, stir people up. But uh, it was always something going on up there before they moved into the station. Back then, it was a little more open and... And you do things like Ron Wilson. He tried to be the wizard, a smart man on the team. He had a satellite dish, and he'd go home and eat supper, and he'd watch uh, Jeopardy. Well, when he'd come back up there, he would be on at record time, and he'd sit there and answer all the questions. And everybody thought he was real smart, but he wasn't, he wasn't telling them that he was watching it 30 minutes before he'd come back. So, so everybody said, well, here comes Wilson. Let's see how smart he is tonight. And he'd sit down there and answer all the Jeopardy questions, and everybody thought he was the sharpest thing in the world. But he was really watching it on, TV, on satellite an hour before he... <laughs> So it was just a, you know, always something somehow to get something on somebody. That's all he wanted to do is cut out and play till the whistle blew. Then that's what we go. Tell us, what about? Did you have like a favorite truck or a favorite piece of equipment? Oh yeah, the old Hulley. <clears throat> Every time you could hear that thing crank up and come out, so I lived down. On, Lower in the town at that time, and when there'd be a fire, I'd come out my back door and I could hear that old holy truck winding up that thing, that Wickershaw engine. Every time he changed gears, it'd just make a roaring sound. It, it, that was probably the one I liked better than anything. Of course, they talked about the old uh, chain drive. Mm -hmm. They talked about when it draft water, so if, if a fish got sucked in that thing, it said it's coming through the nozzle. <laughs> so it had the pumping power. I never did deal with that other than in parades, and I think they took it down to the golf course and pumped on it uh, when they was pumping water out because of the drought one year. But, and I've heard some of the old people talk about back years ago, uh, they pumped water from the... Uh, yeah, it supplied river. water from the lake to yeah. the town when the pumps went down right. out there. Yeah. And then it was, uh, I think Chief Nance said it was for a week or so. It yeah, it was sit out there and run a 24 week. hours a day. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. it, well worth the... <laughs> it done good. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, all in all, it's been a good time. There's been some sad times, but with life that comes along. So. The other hilarious thing I would say, you remember them little row houses you sitting outside the squad building? Yeah. We burnt them, you know, for practice. Uh, and, but before we burned them, they caught on fire one night. It was about 9 or 10 o'clock. And it gutted the house pretty good. And I was in there after it <clears throat> had got the fire out. And I was walking around in there and smoking. And all of a sudden, the back porch, the bathroom's on the back door. Back porch, it opened up. Here comes Pete out. I said, what are you doing, Pete? He said, Oh, I had to go bad. <laughs> I said, Pete, if I went in there, I know I'd have to go bad. I could not believe it. You how them old houses. I remember that story. Pete talking about that. Stuff. He come out of there. I said, You must really had to go. He said, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I laughed about that and told a few. I couldn't believe he went in that old. Mm, it was rough. <laughs> But they will say it is you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> we call a lot of house fires. Lots of house fires. Yeah.
Right. And we burn a lot for training. But uh, all in all, I think it was a lot of fun. Uh, we really didn't have that many injuries as far as that many people. I, think I got hurt one time, but... The FCX fire, was you involved? Yes. Did you have to be hospitalized for that? No. But you wasn't one of the ones? No, everybody else. We had you know, go get those uh, tests yeah. before they jumped in your wrist and tested for your uh, O2 content. For that. Yeah, you was okay on that one. Yeah. I, I think there was, what, 13 hospitalized, was it? Uh, 13? I'm not sure. Joe Benson... I think there was some of the same. Melvin Allman. Uh, it was a good many of them was. Uh, you knew how that started, don't you? I don't. You never hear how that I don't started. think I recall. Stutz, he's filming the police department. Yeah. He was backed up back there at the back, parked, and a Cadillac converter off the police car. Oh. That's what I was told, man. Whether it's, whether it's true or not. But he was sitting back there in the Cadillac converter. They had straw and stuff on the ground back there, mm -hmm. right next to it. And it caught on fire and went in the middle. <laughs> That's what I heard. You know, you hear a lot of things. But that, that was a pretty good story, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty good. Is the old pretty... fish house was a bad fire, but I didn't get, I was out of town then. Where was that? Right there across from the old Duke Power Building. Remember, it used to be a big two-story house in the summertime. Oh, okay, yeah. That was a that was a bad fire. Oh, yeah. I bet. It was an old thick, which fish market they had in there. So, and then there was a lot of fires down on the lower end. But a lot of times, when you got there, it consumed. Paid a lot of them. visits to the mills and everything too. That it that was, was about a monthly thing. Even when I come along, and it was right. still a monthly thing. Draymore was a yeah. real busy place. Yeah. Draymore and Burlington. Right. It seemed like that was a monthly <clears throat> visit at least. And a lot of false alarms at the yeah. rest homes. That's right. Done a lot of that. So. But all in all, you know, it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. I don't think much of it now when I see them go out because it goes so much. <laughs> We didn't run that many calls. Okay. Now, do you still listen? Do you have a scanner? Oh, yeah. Do you? I listen, but I don't go. Oh, I know. If you see me in a fire, it's because I've been, I'm on the way going somewhere or, <laughs> and run up on it, and I'll just stop and look just for fun of it, you know, think yeah. back. But as far as, I'll even go down the road with uh, run up on a wreck or something, and I blow the horn, get out of the road, let's go. I've seen enough of this. <laughs> But that's another part. Back then, we used to, when we first come on, we were fire and rescue, and we got involved in some real raunchy stuff with rescue. And, and I don't know. I was kind of glad when I got rid of both of them. Really, I didn't know it was you know biology as much as do. I do. Some people said, "Well, how do you do that?" I said, "I don't know, but I don't want to do it no more." You get to the point where it just mm. didn't care for it. It's like everything else, it gets old and you get where you just don't want to deal with it. So. Yeah, we, we, we've had a few guys talk about the history of the fire and the rescue together uh, and, and how that got started and, and all. Yeah, we were pretty much first in the state or I think Yes, as far as one of the top ones, one the that's top for sure. Ones. I know that. And, and I like doing rescue about as much as I did fire. It uh, seemed like I you know, got a little more input in rescue because it wasn't covered by the fire department until after a few years when we moved away and got the other building. And, uh, I was assistant chief for one year. and uh, Like everybody else, you make them mad, but yeah. If you tell them, if you tell somebody what to do, they don't like it. You lose that vote, yeah. and that that's just a sort of a political thing. <laughs> but you see a lot of things that it's not good when you're doing that kind of work. And 
Uh, a lot of times you have trouble sleeping at night after you do a lot of these things. That's like house fires when you when you lose somebody in a house fire and have to go in and get them, and they're in bad shape, and it's it's hard to sleep at night. So, but they will say if somebody's got to do it and you volunteer to do it, so you do it. Yeah. Um, what what uh, let's see. Well, it's it's kind of out of order, but today, what if you what would what would you want to pass on to the firemen today about the Morrisville Fire Department, its history, and what would you want them to remember the most? And we've heard everything from the camaraderie to the to the the brotherhood and the how it's. There was a lot of brotherhood back when the squad and uh, fire department were together and you had your Tuesday night meetings on the first of the month and uh, that that was a lot of brotherhood. Then as it you know, it's grown now, I don't know anybody up there, very few. And it's probably yeah. people working up there don't know everybody because of the shifts they're on or you know, they might recognize them by seeing but as far as names and all that, uh, we used to uh, basically you knew who you could look, get behind in a fire, and you knew who would look after you and who would uh, they would look after you, and you would look after them. And, and if you go down, he'd go down with you. They were just that type of people back then. And generally, at fires, when you'd have to go in on a fire, you'd just pick certain people you'd go in with because you trusted them, not necessarily, you know, it was just a buddy, old buddy, buddy stuff, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, it was generally like that, you, but as far as <clears throat> remembering anything really in particular, it, it was just, a, it was a family group. I mean, you, you could get together and we had Christmas seeds and it was real enjoyable until things changed like they do and everything. Yeah. I mean, you get away from the, it was sort of like family. Yes. And, and now it's just business. It's yeah. getting a lot harder with more stations, a lot harder to get yeah. those people you in. You can't get together. You know, and, how many people was on the department when you was yeah. at most active in the fire department? You remember? The department? Yeah, the total department wise. Was, there was 30, I think 30. 30 or so? Uh, 30 volunteers. 30 volunteers. They like to keep 30 volunteers. Plus, about, then you would then have you had, uh, about 15 paint. No, it's been less than 16. 16 paint. All right, so look at, look at it now. We're getting ready to close down on 80. So, yeah. You know, and that's all full time staff. You, you can't keep up with that many people. No, that's, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. I don't know if but you're right, the Christmas parties, you know, I've been here for 14. 14 years going on my 15th year now here right. and uh, you, you're right the Christmas parties the monthly meetings you know and then we hadn't eaten then you know right. they would usually cook steaks and stuff I, I can't remember who the company day. was yeah parade day we have the oysters and shrimp which right. we still do right. right but you know it's not like it used to be in the older right. days it's it's you harder to get people there. there. Yeah, it's harder the to get older people days there. it was like a family get together. Yeah, exactly. You bring your wife and uh, sometimes your kids, and it was just like a get together. That's why I, I don't know if everybody looked forward to the parade or looked forward forward to the oyster cook more than anything. Which was I can't. You know, a lot of people would rather have the oyster cook. Yeah, you know, that was the big thing. Like you said, that was a huge draw. For a long time, and we're extremely lucky that they're still letting us do that today. Yeah. The town, yeah. and then the Christmas get together. I yeah. think everybody. I wish we could still do that. And children yeah. enjoyed that. And, uh, I hate my son didn't. He he was a volunteer yeah. for. Dean was a volunteer too. for a while, but he decided that wasn't his thing. And if it's not your thing, you that's don't right. need to be there. No. And that's what I told him, and he, he decided. He didn't want to, but he was a police officer for a while, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, uh, Mr. Sink called back and talked about the uh, chicken pot pies that you. Yeah, they, they've done all that cooking and stuff. That yeah. was for the lake uh, property down at Mountain Island. And 
Yeah. And we had such a squabble over. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't decide whether they want to put the money in their pocket or they want to put it in their in the relief fund, wasn't it? I can't remember. I wasn't. I can't yeah. remember. What they were, well, they were having these secret meetings to decide they were going to sell the property. I was far surprised Henry didn't tell you how they'd done that. He, he talked about the lake property and going there and help them build it and all that kind of stuff, but... He didn't say how they disposed of it? I don't See, they remember sold the property. Did. They sold the property and they got the money, but they didn't know what to do with it. And they, they had meetings and basically they wanted to divide it up. And they got to checking and found out that they couldn't do that by, you know, law. So they ended up putting it in the, uh, our, uh, relief money that we get uh, retirement, not uh, from the state, but the, but from uh, the town, up town part, part, part of it. Are you still a member <clears throat> of that board? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, if the stock market continues to go like it is, it might not be. <laughs> 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 uh, we've probably lost a little bit of money. <laughs> we're still in good shape. Yeah. But, uh, that, that's basically the only retirement we really got from being a volunteer is that those monthly checks we get. It's not like the town where you get a pay about what you get when you retire. But, yeah. but anyway, they, they squabbled over that for a while. And I think it took them probably a year to get it settled out. And they finally, instead of trying to put it in their pocket, ended up and decided that legally the best thing to do is just put it in the fund. And that's the way it ended up. Yeah, we um, some of them, some of the guys afterwards talked about they remembered the uh, the carnival when they the, the little booze at the carnival. Uh, Lee rides, <clears throat> but I wasn't involved. I wasn't on the park when they had that. I yeah. remember they used to spot right down at Liberty Park. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But uh, that was before the town really started uh, taking care of the fire department. It's, yeah. You know that was extra money. Uh, of course, this was just a poor cotton mill town. I remember when basically every street in this town was dirt, except Main Street. And they paved them slowly. They finally put sewer lines. We used to run. <clears throat> now they make you crib a hole. Uh, we used to, when they cut a street, they'd cut a sewer line down the street, they'd run all the way down the length of the street, a hole about that wide and about 10 foot deep. And that was our playtime. <laughs> Get in this end, run to come out to the end. And <laughs> it's wonderful we didn't get buried in one of them holes. I remember when they put the swimming pool in over to War Memorial. Yeah. They left, uh, they dug a hole, I bet it was 20 foot deep and a long for a drain or something. I don't know what it was for. But I remember walking through that thing and looking up to see a little hole up there. I was dumb. <laughs> But you were having fun, weren't oh, you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, it's like, yeah, I think if you leave a hole like that over. But. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah it, was, it was definitely um, a sense of community. Yeah. It was just a small town, really, yeah. till, till the big times come. Yeah. The racing and the yeah. lake come up, and now we run with the big boys. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, yeah, and even that's the sense a lot of people conveyed is that the fire department was was a it was a little community within itself, and then now as it's grown, you're sort of losing that because you're getting almost eighty people and all. And I mean, it's still a little bit there, but it's not like it used to be. No, you know, it's, it's not like it used to be. Yeah. It, it's still wonderful, but uh, time goes along. Some of us leave. And it slowly is just dropping off, and yeah. years down the road, basically this will be the only memory of it, is <clears throat> what you've got recorded. It'll be like the old stock car stuff you got out there. We'll be setting up on a shelf somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have see. To go back to that book or the disc and see, I know he told me so-and-so. We'll look back here. And and see what he, what he says. Whether it's truth or not, we'll go with it. <laughs> if you can't find an answer, then and you find one that sounds pretty good, you go with it. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, let's see. If you don't have anything, you got any other? I think that's pretty good. Yeah. Got any other?
Okay. Well then.